Hi, I'm Keith Grossman. I'm one of the owners of Simplify Optics. And I'm Javon Diaz, one of the other owners as well. And we have a third, Noel Diaz. Yeah, so uh, we wanted to give you guys an a, a inside view of our lab, uh, Simplify Optics. Um, Simplify Optics is, I guess, one of the last remaining independent family-owned uh, laboratories. Uh, both Javon and I, we've, we've grown up in the lab business. Uh, uh, since we're babies. Um, our dad's also in the same industry and uh, we started this lab a couple of years ago because uh, we wanted to do something special for the industry. So um, so you're going to see some things inside here that I think make us different. Uh, obviously it's our equipment and most of all it's our people but um, you know uh, Javon's going to talk a little bit about our concept of Simplify. So the idea of Simplify Optics came from uh, more than anything an obsession of, uh, of us wanting to do something that makes things easier. Uh, we've heard so many stories from our the ECP doctors, uh, optical managers, about how tough it is to do business with, with a lot of different labs. And so for us, we said, well, I mean, if we're thinking of a name, why don't we call it something that we strive to be, which is simple. And, and, it's a, and, and the cool thing about it is, is, that, is that it's a verb, it's simplified. Um, some of the questions we got early on was, why, why isn't it simplified? It sounds better. And it's done with a purpose. We're constantly working on improvement. It's continuous improvement to make things easier and easier for our customers. And so we've taken that notion and, um, and created a lab out of it. And more than anything, again, like my partner Keith was saying, the machinery, it's great, top of the line machine or machinery that we have, state of the art, but really it's in the people that we have and it is the experience that we offer to you who may be watching us or potential customer. Um, the experience of dealing with someone on the phone that knows what they're doing, that's really in the lab, that really touches the, the orders and it isn't just a call center that's you know far off distance. Um, we are here, we care about every job that we touch and uh, it's American made, it's family owned lab, it's small business and, uh, and we're, we're very very prideful of that and so we invite you to join us as we travel through our lab. So the, the first step in surfacing uh, to make a pair of uh, prescription lenses is we need to block the lens and what blocking means is we need to place a, uh, a metal chuck or receptacle onto the lens so that it can uh, fit onto our machines. So this is a, a block and it's attached to the front of the lens using a, a special metal alloy. So this machine here is a blocker. We take our lenses, place them on here, block them on center, and when we're done, this is what it looks like. So we're attaching this metal to this uh, lens using this special alloy. So this has to cool for about a half hour and then it's ready for a uh, generator which cuts the prescription. All right, so the next process after, after blocking is the generator or the, the turning machine, the diamond turning machine. This is where we're gonna cut the prescription into the lens. So what you're looking at here is a semi-finished lens. It's very thick. The alloy is cool and hardened, so it's ready to go onto this machine. And we have a series of diamonds and cutting tools that are going to take this and turn it into this. So a thinner prescription lens. So we're going to remove material, cut the right curve, cut the right progressive design, all in one cut on our machine. All right, so the last step in surfacing uh, for prescription is we've now generated the, the curvature and the design. Now we need to polish, polish that lens so that the patient can see through it properly. So this machine behind me is the Multiflex Polisher. It's a robotic machine. It uses a special polishing pad that we use for all materials. And we're gonna polish that lens for several minutes on this uh, CNC driven machine. And after that, we'll have a prescription lens that's clear and ready for our next process. So we are in our AR department. Um, it is a class 10,000 clean room. Uh, it is HEPA filter, there's positive airflow, it's temperature controlled. So uh, essentially, it's a, a, a climate that's suitable for this AR coating to adhere well to the lenses. 
the, the first step that we're going to be going through is our uh, hard coating machine, our washer, hard coat. So it does both. So at this point, what we do is we'll get six lenses, uh, so three pair, that will start from the beginning of the process here. We'll go through a deep cleaning, ultrasonic cleaning. And as it goes through, uh, it'll get to the point where it gets a nice primer once it's super clean. And then it gets our dipped hard coating um, that again is made up of, of silica properties that is used for glass uh, as well. And, and so what this does is really hardens the lens and really protects it from any scratching. Um, we see a pair, uh, a rack coming out at this point towards the end of the process here. The whole process takes about 30 minutes from start to finish, uh, at which point when you start that first rack, five, uh, after about five minutes or so, you will get another rack that comes out. Um, so. So we got our first rack coming out here, ready to go. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it off of this rack, right? And we're going to we're going to then cure it. And so the curing process at this point um, is one of two processes that we do. One is our, our uh, quick cure oven, uh, similar to a pizza oven. And, uh, and what you do is you insert a tray where you've loaded uh, about four pairs of lenses in there. And from start to finish, it takes 45 minutes to get through the oven. It cures, uh, it hardens the, the hard coat, and it makes it ready to go to our next step, which is the actual process of the air coating onto the, the lenses. Um, that's the first process. The second one, if it doesn't go through our quick cure oven, it'll go into our uh, just thermal cured ovens here. And uh, this oven takes a little bit longer. It's a two hour process um, when it gets put into here. Um, but it's great for flow. We have, uh, it's a pass through oven. So essentially it'll cure on this side. And once those two hours are up on the opposite side, we have doors that are accessed uh, for this oven that the next step is able to pull that rack and putting it to our AR coder. And so essentially that is the beginning of the AR coating process. Very important to get a good hard coating on that lens so that the AR coating bonds to it. So we're at the second part of our AR coating process. This is where the actual air coating um, is added to the lens. And, uh, and again, at this point, we've already added a, a hard coating, a dipped hard coating. What we are looking at here is lenses that are now being put onto these segments. There is, on average, about 60, 60 to 70 lenses that can be placed um, on these segments to complete it. And, um, and it's a very tricky process because we want to make sure that we're not touching the lens as we're putting these lenses into the rings. Uh, for the most part, these are drop-in rings, meaning we get a lens in, we drop it into the ring. And, uh, and there, there's also a couple of rings on there that uh, we actually are, are suspension rings. Uh, where the lens is suspended within. And even with those, we have to be very careful not to scratch lenses. Again, with the drop-in rings, it's very easy to leave a fingerprint on it. And if we do that, the AR coating will adhere on top of that fingerprint. And so that fingerprint essentially stays on that lens. Um, so we have to be very careful during this process. Uh, what you're looking at here, again, in our clean room, within this area, there is a HEPA filter as well. Uh, we're really making sure that no dust particles get onto these lenses. We want to make sure there's nothing on them, either as pure as can be, before getting into the AR chamber. Um, again, to, to have the best success of the AR adhering well to these lenses.
So again, 70 lenses or so um, can fit into these segments. Once they're all loaded, then it's time to get it into the actual AR coating chamber. So at this point, we load those segments and again, it's divided by three different segments that get loaded into this AR chamber. As you can see, uh, the interior of it, it's a, a vacuum deposition chamber, essentially uh, all moisture and everything within um, to really kind of simplify things. What, what is occurring within this chamber is uh, the air coating, which is really chemicals that are uh, that are being evaporated by the use of a laser into the atmosphere will begin to adhere towards the, the, the portion of the lens that is exposed in the process and so that will be again segments placed here the bottom portion of that lens is what will be getting that AR coating this rotates spins through and um, and again, very interesting process where the laser is, 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 uh, is burning these chemicals. And once the system knows it reached a certain uh, temperature, um, it will open a shutter to allow that to come into the atmosphere there. And once a certain thickness is reached, and we're talking nanometers in terms of thickness here, so we're talking thickness of a, of a hair potentially there, um, we're getting a series of those seven to eight layers on average we'll say on each side of this lens um, I'd like to at this point show what AR coating is made up of again a couple different chemicals here um, uh, different compounds different low index high index compounds here um, chrome is used quite a bit uh, in different air coatings as well. Uh, just an example of what is used to make your air coating. So a lot of times we'll get customers saying, wow, I thought, I thought the air coating was something where you just spray paint it on or, or you dip it in like you do maybe for a tint. And it's, uh, it's very, very, very different from that notion. And it's actually very intense uh, process to get the air coating done. Now, this process takes on average anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes, let's say. Uh, once we're done, we pull it out and we actually have to flip those lenses. When we flip them, we have to put it back in and now get the opposite side of that lens to get the air coating on it. Uh, this machine requires uh, a lot of maintenance as well in terms of cleanliness. We want to make sure that we're every day cleaning different parts of the machine to maintain consistency with color. Believe it or not, color can be affected even by uh, cleanliness of a machine. So in the end, that's, that's our process. Takes about an hour and a half once all said and done, uh, AR coating on both sides of the lens. Okay, so here we are in our finishing department. And again, the most, most important thing that we do in our finishing department has to do with the edging of the lens, actually cutting that lens, getting it into the frame, making sure the sizing is correct. And uh, we utilize MEI for our uh, most of our edging. As you can see here, we have uh, the bispheres that we're standing in front of. Bispheres are great machines. What these machines can do is uh, cut two lenses at the same time. So the machine has two different heads. So as I'm loading a pair, it'll each head will grab uh, one lens and we'll cut it at the same time. So because of that there's two different sets of cutters within the, the machine here and within each uh, magazine of the cutter uh, we have about 10 to 11 different tools that we can use to bevel the edge of the lens. As the uh, lenses come into the machine first thing it'll do is it'll rough it so it'll give it just a general cut uh, based on the sizing that it needs. And then after that, it'll, it'll uh, based on what the uh, machine senses that would be best in terms of bevel, it'll use that tool 
and it'll bevel that lens. And, um, and once it's done, it comes through, processes it on its own to the uh, back of the machine where we are ready at that point to mount it. Um, these machines are, are great machines. Uh, calibration is not something we, we have to do very, very often, which is great. They hold uh, their value pretty well um, in terms of sizing. So uh, it's great machines. Takes on average, I'd say about, uh, about a minute, minute and a half to get a pair done. And, um, and we're producing quite a bit of work uh, from these machines, anywhere upwards of 35 to 40 or so orders per, per hour. And, uh, and we got two of them here. And we also use a, a 641, which is a smaller uh, variation here of the MEI. And this one is um, just as good as these. It only cuts one lens at a time, but we really use that for the Technocam capabilities. And Technocam really is kind of an engineering software for lenses. So we can manually go in there and tell the machine, based on what our knowledge and what we, what we know of the frame, uh, we can produce a very specialized, very tailored cut on lens. And so we do most of that on our 641. So we've come to this uh, part of our process where we are now assembling the, uh, the order. So we've already edged the lens. Now we're, we're getting that frame. We're making sure those lenses are on size. Um, and if everything is, is, is to what we expect it to be, then at that point, the mounter will mount those lenses into the frame. They'll insert them into the frame. Um, and of course, different variations of styles that we work with. Um, our Xyle mounting, our plastic frame mounting here, uh, which is what she's working on at, at the moment. It looks like she's got uh, potentially a progressive there, so she's checking alignment, making sure that the, the, uh, the laser engravings on those lenses are to where they need to be. And, um, and she's also checking four-point alignment, making sure that when she sits down on the table, uh, we got the bottom of the eye wire that's touching as well as the back of the temples. Um, so, uh, so that's, that's the Xyle mounting. She also does the metal, which is very similar. Um, only difference at that point is she's going to be using a screwdriver to unscrew and get those in there, uh, into the frame. And, um, and then we get into the more difficult things, which is the three piece or the, the three piece drill mounts, we call them. Um, and those require just a little bit more of a steady hand because you're really putting a lot of times a tool right up on that lens and it's very, very easy to scratch uh, a lens that way. So again, very important part of the process. Uh, a lot of uh, hand-eye coordination, very important. Manual dexterity is very important in what she's doing. And uh, she's producing uh, anywhere from 20 to 25 orders uh, mixed per hour. Obviously, if she's doing more of the three-piece drill mounts, that would probably go down to uh, 10 to 15 depending on how many of those she's doing uh, but uh, it's it's a it's a very difficult area to work in as well you're from experience your fingers can really hurt after doing this for a couple of hours so it takes some time to build up kind of that tolerance and that strength to, to be able to do this for you know seven eight hours a day but uh, once she's done with it and it's okay with her she signs off she stamps the job uh, for accountability purposes and to say, hey, if I'm putting my, my name on it, that means I, I believe in it, uh, that what I did is I did a job well done and it's ready to go to our quality control where we're checking prescription at that point and we're also uh, doing a cosmetic check and then cleaning it towards the end where at that point, if all goes well, it's ready to be shipped.